Welcome to my channel, Living Linux. In this video, I want to show you Stable Diffusion XL on a Raspberry Pi 5. Now, this is something that I already did on a Raspberry Pi 4 and on a Racha Rock 5A and 5B. So, people that have seen those videos, then the first part of the video is just the same as before. So, to be able to run it on a single board computer, then I recommend using Onyx Stream from Vito Plantamura. So this is his GitHub page. And he has a Raspberry Pi 02. And he says it even works with only 512 MB of RAM. So um, at first it was working with Stable Diffusion 1.5 and now with the October update it's working with Stable Diffusion XL. So this is an explanation on how this is possible and here's also the instructions to build it. Uh, I will leave uh, a link to one of my earlier videos where that is explained in more detail. Um, I will also leave a link to this website because um, this has perhaps a slightly easier explanation on how to install it. So I will leave a link to this website in the description of the video. What I did notice is that uh, I also tried it with um, Raspberry Pi OS. And as you can see here, at each diffusion step, it takes, let's just say, 350 seconds up to 380 seconds, something like that. And that's even more than twice as slow as a Racha Rock 5A with the Rock chip RK3588. Now, I don't know what it is with Raspberry Pi OS for the Raspberry Pi 5, but uh, at least with Stable Diffusion, it's slow, um, but my technical knowledge doesn't go far enough that I really know why. So if you want to play around with Stable Diffusion, then it's better to uh, use Ubuntu 23.10 as I'm using here now. and. I also took a screenshot and here you can see that the diffusion steps are much quicker compared to Raspberry Pi OS. Um, yeah, one of the things with stable diffusion and perhaps also with other AI generators, uh, yeah, sometimes you get some weird effects with limbs. So. Looks like the horse here has five legs, which is not really <laughs> as it was intended. But um, you can try to use more diffusion steps. That might help. I'm not really an expert or what you can try is just use the same prompt again and see if you get a better result. So uh, as you can see from the command line, uh, you can switch between Stable Diffusion XL and Stable Diffusion 1.5. So um, 
yeah, I think that for a single board computer, that's uh, if it's possible to generate an image in, let's just say, roughly, um, let's just say half an hour, 40 minutes, something like that, then that is, uh, yeah, in my opinion, a, a good result. And of course, you can argue that uh, if you have like a, a high end graphics card, uh, that it will do it just in a matter of minutes uh, with better results. Um, yeah, but I mean, like the Raspberry Pi 5 is, let's just say, a 100 euro single board computer. And I guess it's really hard to get a decent graphics card for 100 euros. And then you also need a computer to run the graphics card. Um, yeah, what I did notice is that um, for some reason on single board computers, it seems to be, yeah, a bit stingy with the colors. So I've tried to uh, play around with the prompts. So adding full color, it helps a little bit, but not to the extent that I was happy with the result. You can also try to uh, add something to the negative prompt, something like grayscale that also has some effect. Uh, and yeah, sometimes it might help just to assign colors to some of the objects that you have in the prompt. So, um, yeah, just as let's just say sort of a bonus, um, I'm actually using Kuha screen recorder on the Raspberry Pi 5 with uh, Ubuntu. And I have had a hard time to actually get it working. Um, on the Raspberry Pi 5 with Ubuntu, I wasn't able to get it working with GNOME Builder, but I have the suspicion that you still need to follow these instructions um, because I have the feeling that something gets installed that you need to compile it with Meeson. But I haven't really figured out what it is, but that is something for my next video. But at least it's good to see that you can actually use uh, a screen recorder on Wayland. And yeah, some people might say like, hey, it's already built in. You know, because you can um, choose to record a screen. But with the built-in GNOME screen recorder, as far as I know, there are no options to record audio. So that's the advantage with Kua. Uh, you can record the audio directly with the video. So, but like I said, that is probably the topic of my next video. So that's all for now. And I hope to see you again in my next video.